this video, we're going to use some found images to create background and some objects that we could use in a game. I'm going to begin by opening up this file, streetscene.jpg, which shows a street scene with a row of houses. You could imagine this working as the background for a side scroller game, for example, where it might repeat and tile as we move from side to side uh, in the game. Now, to use this uh, in our game, we want to make sure that it's going to tile uh, nicely, that it's not going to be that um, much of an obvious break as you repeat the image. So we're going to want to take a look at how that's going to, uh, how that's going to appear, uh, see if there are any discontinuities, and then try to fix them. So to look at that, I'm going to go up to the image menu, and I'm going to resize the canvas and basically make two copies of this image and stick them next to each other. Uh, there are two or three related uh, functions here under the image menu. Scale image to new size is something that you would use to resize the whole image. And then resize canvas uh, will keep the existing image, but just make the document larger um, so we get more empty space to work with. I'm going to choose that option and look at the current width, which is 2200 pixels wide and 1013 pixels high. I want to make my document be twice the current width. Um, so to do that, I'm going to click here on the pop-up that says pixels and change that to percent. Um, so I can ask for a new canvas size that instead of being 100% of the current width is going to be 200%. You can see when I did that, uh, that this area down here at the bottom of the dialog box changed a little bit and showed the new extra wide uh, kind of area that I have right here. There's a red box that shows where in the new canvas my current image will show up. Um, and I can slide this around to control where in this extra white space I want it to be. Or I can use this set of buttons over here on the left, the anchor points, uh, to control that. So I want to click the middle left one over here. I'm not making the canvas any taller. I'm just making it wider. Um, and it's going to create a bunch of extra white space here off to the right. Then I'll just click OK. Um, and at first, it doesn't appear that anything much has happened. Um, but to see the changes, I'm going to need to zoom out. There are a couple of ways of zooming in Krita. One is down here at the bottom right corner of your Krita window. There's a zoom slider. And you can see as I slide this to the right, I zoom in. And as I slide to the left, I zoom out. A hotkey way of doing this on the keyboard is using the plus and minus keys. So the plus key. will zoom in, and the minus key will zoom out. To see the whole image, we can use the sliders right here. We can also use this hand tool that looks like a hand. And if you have another tool active, the paintbrush, for example, another fast way of doing this is by using the middle mouse button. You click that down and drag. It'll allow you to pan around. So here I'm going to zoom in by hitting plus again and use the middle mouse button to pan around in the image. And you can also hold down the space bar and click with the left mouse button if you're not using a three button mouse. Uh, and that will also temporarily activate the panning tool so you can move around inside your canvas when you're zoomed in. Now I'm going to zoom back out so I can see the whole image here. Uh, and look at what I want to do just to take my original photograph and then duplicate it and place it over here in this empty space on the right. Uh, one other thing that I'll just uh, mention is that there's this checkerboard grid that you see uh, in the empty space I just created. Um, so in Krita, this represents transparent space. Uh, and that's going to become important when we create um, other objects to place on top of uh, this background. So to duplicate the image, I'm going to use the rectangular selection tool over here in the toolbox on the left. I'll drag a selection rectangle around the photograph right here, up to edit and copy, and then go back up to edit and paste. Now you can see in the layers tab, 
it's created a new layer here called layer two uh, pasted, which is just a copy of the uh, original layer. I'm gonna move it over to the right using the move tool, which is this little cross with arrows in the toolbox. And I'll drag that over the right like so to see how this is gonna look. So if I put this into my game and started rotating or uh, started moving along, imagine we're over here and we start moving to the right. You see there's a point where there's this noticeable discontinuity that's going to happen um, where the two images are joined and see that the sidewalk doesn't quite match up, that this line in the houses uh, and the roof line doesn't quite match up and so on. So it's a little bit jarring. Now there are a number of ways that we can fix this. Uh, one of them would be to use some warping tools, uh, which are all found here in the transform tool um, to adjust and bend and slightly distort the image to make everything match up. Another would be to use the clone tools uh, to grab parts of source image on each side and kind of mix them together um, to uh, patch up that joint. Um, but the quickest way is probably just to take this image over on the right and mirror it. Just flip it over uh, because then you know that the edge is going to match up on both sides just by creating a little bit of a mirror image. Um, so to do that, we'll go up to the image menu and, uh, sorry, the layer menu, go to transform and say mirror layer horizontally. I'm also going to deselect my selection because I don't need to have anything, so anything selected right now. I can just work with these two layers um, as discrete objects. So I've taken layer two and I've mirrored it. And now I'll go back to the move tool again and drag that layer over here and see what that looks like put into place. So you can see right here, everything matches up. There is this sort of like weird, extremely thin house that's been created um, right there at the edge. That's still a little bit noticeably strange. Um, so we might be able to do something to, uh, you know, to remove that. Uh, I think by sliding this over so that we get rid of this little bit of red brick in the middle and the pale green of these two houses, just merge those together. So you have basically one house uh, with those combined. So I'm going to slide layer two over a little bit, like so. Um, and then I think I want to get rid of this little strip of red brick that's in layer two as well. For that, I'll go back to my rectangular selection tool. And I'm going to draw a box just along this, uh, this slice. Like so, we can always take out more if we want later on. And then I'm going to delete this part of the image. So you can do this by going up to the edit menu and choosing clear. Uh, the hot key for that is uh, it's like uh, backspace. One thing that's important to note is that backspace and delete do different things. Uh, so one of them will uh, delete that image uh, selection out of the layer. Um, just removing the pixels entirely. Um, and the other one will delete it, but fill it with the background color, uh, which, is, uh, which is white. Anyway, so I'm going to use that clear command right here. Uh, and you can see it remove that part out of layer two. Uh, now I'll just click somewhere in empty space with the box tool to remove the selection. So I have nothing selected again. Go back to the move tool. Uh, and slide this over again like so. See how that might match up. Um, let's zoom in a little bit and we're getting closer to getting a nice match right here. Uh, I think I might get rid of a little bit more off of the edge here where that window is. And we might try just doing it only on that area
Let's see how that goes. So it's created a, a sort of an interesting window that I think we can probably get away with. You can see here up at the top, there's uh, this little architectural detail that, that kind of sticks out a little bit. Um, I'm gonna hide layer two just for a moment by clicking the eye icon on the left. So we can see what's underneath that. Um, you can see underneath it has sort of like the same architectural element that um, will just get in the way. I think what I would want to do is remove that and replace it with just some more of the roof. Um, if I delete this part out, like so, you can see that it just has another little bit of it underneath it. So that doesn't really help me. I'm going to go ahead and undo that by hitting. Uh, Command Z on the Mac or Control Z on PC. And instead, what we'll do is just grab a little bit of the roof from another part of the building over here. I'm going to copy that and paste it. So this is called layer three over here. Again, I can now clear my selection. And using the move tool, you can see layer three is this little fragment of roof that I could just move over here and drop down like that. Um, and you can see there's a little bit of the, uh, that architectural detail still sticking up, um, which I could get rid of, I think, by just grabbing a little bit of the sky nearby and copying that and pasting it. And moving it over like so. And you can see that the layer order uh, can come in handy here to get everything stacked up very nicely. Let's go ahead and remove that selection and look at it. So it's certainly not perfect, um, but I think for our purposes, just to start off, particularly because you know, we're talking about prototyping games for a game jam, uh, this would definitely be uh, this would be definitely enough to get started with. Um, so as we zoom out, we can see what the whole image will look like, um, and we can also see there's this little bit of extra space that I've ended up with over here on the right because I was moving the layers around. Um, so I'm going to first crop that off, um, and then we're going to look at the seam between this edge over here and this edge over here, because mm -hmm. we imagine we're gonna use this entire long image as a repeating strip. Uh, so first to crop off this extra bit of the image on the right, I'm gonna use the crop tool. Here, I choose that tool, just click in the image and See, I have these handles that I can drag around to set the dimensions for the crop and show uh, what the image would look like after I uh, after I do the crop operation. And when I have it where I want, just hit um, return, and it will apply the crop. So next, I want to look at the join between the left edge and the right edge. One way we could do that would be to again duplicate this, the uh, or increase the size of the canvas, duplicate the image, and paste it over there. Um, but a slightly more efficient way to do that uh, will be to use the offset command. So this is also under the image menu. It's called offset image, and what it will do is it will take the whole picture and shift it off to the side, and then the pixels that go off the edge will wrap around. Um, on the other side. So let's go to offset image. It has a default here, which is offset by x over two, y over two. And what that means is gonna move the entire picture uh, off to the right by 50%. It's gonna shift it halfway over. And then everything that comes off the right side loops back around onto the left. And the same on the y axis, um, up and down. So it'll also push it up and the pixels that come off the top will rotate down to the bottom. If you're making tiles for uh, a complete repeating background, this is the setting that you would want to use. Um, for our case, we're only repeating horizontally. So 
I'm going to change the offset on Y to just be zero. And then click OK. So you can see the image changed. This red house that's now in the middle is the combination of the red house that used to be on the left and the red house that used to be on the right. Let's go ahead and zoom in. Take a look how that, uh, how that looks. Uh, it's not bad. Um, that doesn't look egregiously weird um, and have any kind of major discontinuities um, other than like the odd things that are happening with perspective, of course, as we go across here. Uh, but I think for, uh, for our prototyping purposes, this will totally be sufficient. So at this stage, I've got the uh, tiling for the image all set up. If I wanted to put it back the way it was, you know, I just have it um, start from that original position, I can use the offset image command again. Again, set the Y to zero, and then click OK. And you can see that it once again rotates everything, or uh, translates everything, moves everything off the, uh, one side, and then offsets it back around the other side. Okay, so the last thing that I want to do with this is look at the overall image resolution. If I go up to the image menu and just look at the properties right here, um, you see the width is now 4,238 pixels, the height of 1,013 pixels, um, and you can see there's a lot of other information right here um, about the color mode, um, how the data is stored, the color space, uh, things that you would use for translating the image for print and, um, and so on. Um, but the important thing that we care about right here is just the width and height of the image. Um, so to think about how this is going to go into our game, we need to know the resolution that we want to have for the game window um, or the game screen. Um, and this is obviously something where there's enormous range of um, possibilities that you could choose as the resolutions for your game. Two of the most common ones are the pixel resolutions 1280 times 720 and 1920 times 1080. Um, so those are called um, HD 720 and HD 1080. Um, those are two of the most popular screen resolutions for mobile devices. Um, they're uh, also inherited from uh, DVD and high definition formats. Um, and they're also you know, can be commonly used as resolutions for um, for, for PC games. Uh, you'll often see those as resolutions for uh, for computer monitors as well. Um, so I'm going to imagine that I'm going to use 1280 by 720 as the resolution for my game, just to see what that would look like. Again, if we bring in the crop tool, we go over to the tool options tab. And we can see the width and height for the crop. So if we plug in those numbers for the game screen resolution right here, and imagine a width of 1280 and a height of 720 right there. And to sort of move the crop window around, you can see um, how this large background image would look um, in our game screen. So the main thing you see is that the image is a little bit too tall. So not the entire image fits on the game screen. Uh, so to fix that, we're going to use the image resize uh, command to just shrink the entire thing down a little bit and fit in that screen height. Um, so I'm actually not going to do a crop. I was just using this to kind of visualize what it would look like. So I'll hit escape. To cancel the crop operation, go back up to the image menu and do scale image to new size. So a couple of things I'm going to change. Uh, I'll just leave this resolution right here at 72 pixels per inch. There's a uh, Kind of a standard built-in res for uh, doing digital images for the screen. Under height, measured in pixels, I'm going to put in 720. You can see because I have the constrained proportions box checked that as I change the height 
it will also update the width. So it will scale it uniformly uh, and keep the same aspect ratio. So I click OK. Uh, it doesn't, hasn't visibly done much that uh, changes it at all. Um, but now the image resolution uh, will be such that my game screen will fit nicely like here in the full height of the image. So the last thing I'll do is, of course, save this document. Um, and I'm going to save two versions of it. So the first one I'm going to do, I'm going to go to Save As. Um, and for the file type, I'm going to set this to Krita document. And I'll call this um, Street Scene. repeating dot kra. This is the native document format for Krita, um, and it will include the layers and all the rest of the information um, in, that, uh, in that file. So this file, the kra, is not what we would put into our game. We would just keep that if we needed to continue editing it in Krita. If you're working in, uh, in another program like Photoshop or GIMP, uh, you would save a copy of your work in the native format for that program uh, as well, which for Photoshop is the PSD file uh, and so on. So I'll click Save right here. And then I'm going to go back to the File menu. Um, and again, I'll do, uh, let's see, instead of Save As, let's do Export right here. And I'm going to change this to PNG image and save this as Street Scene Repeating Dot PNG. Uh, so the PNG format is a really common format that you would uh, use in all kinds of game engines. Um, it would flatten out the layers, so it'll just be a single, uh, a single layer of image. Uh, it's a format that it can include transparency, um, and it has a variety of different compression schemes. So you can adjust the quality of the image um, and the compression size depending on what you're trying to use it for. Uh, so it's a very good general purpose image uh, format uh, for working in games and many other things as well. Uh, one thing I'm going to do when I save the file right here is I'm going to take out the spaces um, and just as a naming convention, um, remove spaces and other kinds of special characters out of the file name. Um, you can might do things like put an underscore if you want, or a dash if you want to have a sort of uh, something that looks like spaces in there. And make sure to also put the file extension, the .png extension, over here on the end. Um, and the reason that I'm doing this um, is because at this point I don't know what game engine I'm going to use this in. Um, and in some game engines, it doesn't matter how you name your files; uh, they'll just deal with them. Um, but other ones, particularly ones that work for the web, uh, you'll find that uh, there are specific uh, restrictions on how you set up your file names that uh, will really uh, matter when you're using them. So rules like not including spaces in your file names, not including special characters, punctuation, that kind of thing. When you're doing anything for the web, all of those really come into play. Um, so just as a general rule to make sure I don't accidentally trip myself up later on, uh, I'm just going to use this kind of uh, naming convention as a uh, general practice. So I'll go ahead and save the image. Um, and here, there's lots of settings that you can use to um, tweak the image size and quality and so on. Um, I'll just leave them at their defaults for right now and click OK. Um, and now I have that image saved and ready to use in my game.